hello, you're watching Off New X, and today let's talk about the recently aired sitcom drama, 今日一加油 Never Give Up. This is a 40-episode sitcom drama that has recently aired on the web platform iQiyi. It is produced by the company Dao Cao Xiong, directed by Wu Qiang, Yu Zhongzhong. Wu Qiang also being the director of the recently finished airing, also on iQiyi, romantic period drama Unchained Love, Fu Tu Yuan. And this drama is actually an adaptation of a Korean manga back in 2014 that also got made into a Korean drama in 2020. This Chinese version. Is led by Zheng Kai, Chen Yuqi, Wang Hedi, Zhang Shaogang, Yuan Wenkang, and many other often showing up in IT production actors. It was shot from November 2021 to January 2022. And I know a lot of people who would go into this drama probably would name for、uh, looking at Wang Hedi's work. And this is his third project he did in the royal back in 2021. First, he shot Tang Lan Jue, Fairy and Devil, immediately got into the crew shooting Unchained Love, and then with the same crew moved to the contemporary setting and shooting this drama. I've watched 16 episodes at this point, and as a sitcom, it's very short. Each episode is under 30 minutes. Often, it's only 20 minutes of content each. I'll give it a 1.5 gold mine at this point. And I'm not saying it's not gonna climb any higher if the later episodes get even better. I actually have a really good and positive outlook for this comedy. As usual, let me quickly introduce you to what this is. Before that, I want to mention I haven't read the original Korean manga or watching the Korean version of the drama, so I wouldn't be doing comparison. I wouldn't necessarily know whether it's in any way a good adaptation or it's just. Taking that IP and then completely doing its own thing, but as it stands now, I'm having quite a lot of fun with it. So this is a very simple setting. Sitcom drama. You have a fictional big corporate company in this drama called Golfa, which clearly is based on the original name Goss. And this company, you never know what it does, but it does everything. They'd be doing computers, they'd be doing、uh, phones, softwares, whatever. And this drama is focused on the planning department three and everybody who works in this department, from team leader to deputy team leader to just office clerk to the accountant to the higher level management. And up to the CEO occasionally showing up, and their <laughs> mascot is a panda. Very Chinese choice. All the scenarios that you can imagine and think of of working in a contemporary corporate environment in China, 2020s. Now let's talk about what is good about this drama first. Number one, if you like sitcom, particularly office setting contemporary sitcom, this is a pretty good choice. Last year we've had a really successful sitcom from Chinese drama land called 破事精英 Lord of Losers. The best way for you to gauge Never Give Up is to compare it to Lord of Losers if you've watched that drama. That drama would be heavier, more satirical, deeper. At analysis, at different topics related to corporate environment and 2020s working environment in the world, whereas Never Give Up will be the lighter version, the funnier version, not going so deep version, and crazier version, and even more unrealistic version, and with a lot of more special effect version. Still, it's a very qualified sitcom. It will give you a lot of laughter at the end of the day. Positive point number two: This drama has a very consistent and over exaggerated and very Comedic style in its editing, in its design of transitions. Once you get used to it, you actually enjoy it a lot. For example, because the mascot is a panda, so you see the panda getting squeezed into the show in every weird and unimaginable but funny way. For example, when they transit a scene, they like to use the special effect of pulling the main person in the shot out of the shot, putting in a new background or a new space, and. Linking into the next scene that needs to be done in post production <laughs> tirelessly, cutting people out all the time. Although it's not so hard with AI now these days, it's still a bit effort. And they did it for every almost transition and every episode to create their own style. Apart from this style that's very consistent, they also do the comedy in the very extreme and unrealistic, over the top. But because it's a sitcom, you completely accept. Way such as the planning department too <laughs> is located in Antarctica, <laughs> and there are two people stationed there. It's clearly shot on a stage, but when there's like one episode showing them coming out of the snow buried place, there's still a panda standing in front of that building, and they were waiting there and saying, once the day finishes, they they can finish work, and they realized that they are at the long. 
day of Antarctica and it's gonna last for 67 more days. Another one would be one of the main rows on the team is addicted to plastic surgery and one day she went overboard and turned into another person the next day when she comes in where they literally asked Yang Chaoyue to play her for that one episode. So I actually had a lot of fun because of how free running this sitcom is. First you just accept anything that happens in this show makes sense although it doesn't. The other is you don't know where it's going and because this drama updates midday in China <laughs> unlike most dramas in the evening. So technically I can watch it 10 o'clock p.m. if I want to of the next day episode. I started to do that because <laughs> I don't want to wait. I just want to see what happens in the next ridiculous scenario. The third thing quickly mentioning is about all the main cast. Previously they've been in other dramas. Most recent would be the Unchained Love, such as Zhang Shaogang, Wang Hedi, Chen Yuqi. Zheng Kai was in many other previous films and dramas. First, this is completely real voice acting no dubbing. I'm pretty sure it's mostly live recording, although maybe something gets touched up later. Wang Hedi has improved greatly at his Mandarin, although it's still not arrived yet, honestly speaking, but he is much, much, much better now than a couple of years before when his Mandarin is just a pain to listen to. Chen Yuqi, I actually much, much more prefer her real voice than any of her dubbed voices of other roles she's done before. It makes her feel much more real. And everybody else are very qualified actors, so they have no problems doing their lines. And I think because all the main actors and actresses, they realize this is a sitcom, making that character consistent or having a through line is not a priority. It's every episode's theme and scenario. And turning the comedy and the satirical thing to maximum is the goal of the drama. Therefore, they all become much more relaxed. You'll feel that these actors are almost having a vacation while working. And definitely not meaning to criticize on their working attitudes, but you can sense that they're all like, well, we've done a high romance, you know, just before this, which is dressed up and with wigs and every day it just feels so, uh, you know, we have to pull that emotional reservoir out of ourselves and cry and, you know, do all that. Let's just relax to a contemporary setting where we don't have to to suffer physically, we can stay in an air-conditioned room and then just have a rant about life of 21st century existence. So that links to the last point of the positive thing is it is a situation comedy that covers a huge range of topics that shows up in 21st century corporate life of the normal da gongren, of the wage earner, of the commuter, of the night to five and often actually night to night, sometimes even you know, 7, 11 and 24, 7, working people who are stuck in their contemporary lifestyle and then their corporate job, such as office bureaucracy and how you can take best advantage of that, such as the Monday syndrome that people have, such as you know you should be sleeping early for working tomorrow, but then you forgot and then you have you know, just watch two hours of TikTok straight, such as once you get to 35 years old, it's almost like that barrier and a lot of people get fired and laid off and the age becomes a thing, which is a huge thing in China right now. You also have things such as what's the point of working day in and day out for years in this corporate environment when you start to question about your point of existence and the meaning of your work, you'll see all those topics getting brought up in this drama, obviously from the comedy angle of things. So if you work in similar environment, you hold similar jobs, there definitely will be episodes and themes that will knock on your door <laughs> and make you reflect and think about your own living conditions in life. The final tiny thing, not really positive or negative, but just fun to see is because this drama is produced by Ai Qi and you do see many actors and actresses from other Ai Qi drama that shows up in this. For example, in one episode, you will see the actor Yang Xuwen showing up as a guest star for that one episode for two scenes. He is the lead of the Ai Qi drama What the Mimi Shi You Loving Time, which I really liked. And if you look at the filming schedule of these two dramas, Never Give Up and Loving Time, they're actually shot with two months overlapping and their locations are very close. One is Hangzhou, the other is around Nanjing, Suzhou, those areas of China. And if you look at the actor, he looks exactly like his role, lawyer in 
loving time. They just tweaked his hair a little bit, but it's the same length hair and even like I think same suit that he wears in the drama. It almost feels like Ai Qi Yi did this intentionally to recycle their actors of different shows so that they can cut down the cost. I doubt they get extra payment for doing those dramas. They probably just get pulled off one shooting crew on one day. It's like, yeah, I've finished early today. I just jump to the next crew who is like half an hour away in a very similar setting, just sit down and shoot two scenes and done. And you'll see also that actress who is also in <laughs> Loving Time showing up in this one as the plastic surgery <laughs> accountant. The bad guy in Loving Time also show up for a very quick scene in this one. 2022 was the first year when IT made a profit in its history of existence. I guess this is one of the things they did. Combine all resources and see what's the cheapest way <laughs> to get a drama made. I hope the next 24 episodes will have more of that. I'd be more than happy to see another familiar face showing up. So I have said a lot of positive things about this sitcom. Is there anything that is not good about this drama? Well, if you want to compare it to the great Office sitcoms you've seen, such as Office or IT Crowd, I'd say still the comedy part is not as well written. If you have very high standard, you probably will just only be tickled. The second thing, not necessarily so negative, but it may make it less of a easy to enjoy drama for international audiences than for say a native Chinese speaker. Because for this type of drama, the ideal way of watching it is not 100% focused on the screen and sit down for like an hour and watch like three episodes nonstop reading all the subtitles. Because for sitcom, you watch it for fun. The easiest way would be watching it sort of semi-focused and sometimes just to listen to it and occasionally glance on the screen so that it takes the least of your attention and time. You can be cooking and doing housework while watching it if you are international audiences who do not understand Mandarin just by listening then it makes it much harder you have to stare at the screen you have to basically have isolated attention put on this drama even when it's only 20 minutes per episode since everyone these days have already too much time of our life taken by our big or small screen in life, you know? So sometimes even when you're watching something, you don't quite want to dedicate everything and every moment of your attention. That's about it. All the good and bad I can think about this drama. While I was doing my research and preparing for this video, I looked online about people's opinion about this drama. Again, I start to see like this weird wave of people just writing articles, criticizing how bad this drama is. And when you read through it, it's like, it does not make sense. What they're talking about is not what actually this drama is. It's as if they haven't watched it at all and they're just making it up. These days, you know, like Dramaland has become a really cesspool of fandom of a lot of different people doing different things for their weird motivations <laughs> other than actually talking about the drama itself. I don't think this drama is gonna get super popular in China because sitcom right now is not in its heyday in China. And also this drama is not, let's say on paper, the best written sitcom of this genre. And because it does include popular actors such as Wang Heji, although he's not the main role, a lot of people would literally wear their filter of their natural criticism on an actor being traffic. They're gonna judge this drama before they even watch it. If that is anything, you know, like <laughs> stopping you from trying to check this one out, I'd say don't worry. This is a very qualified sitcom. Even like Chen Yuqi, who I've multiple times of my reviews when I talk about her acting, is like, I can't get her acting, she can't act, looks okay in this drama. This time she doesn't have to pretend to be, I guess anybody, she's very much not. And she just does a job of doing the right situation, <laughs> comedy. That's my opinion on the uh, currently ongoing sitcom, Never Give Up. I hope that's helpful for you to decide whether you should go and check this one out. Thank you for watching Up New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.